This past week might be remembered as an inflection point. Jerome Powell and the Fed scrapped their 2% inflation mandate and told the market we're going to cut anyway, despite recent data. And because of that, the market rallied and all the major indices finished in the green. So when the market goes into a buying frenzy, it's time that we as investors and traders get back to the fundamentals. Today, we're going to have a look at valuation earnings as well as take a deep dive into everything about the equal weight. We're going to be looking at the charts, the fundamentals and the composition on how we could possibly get to a 6000 S&P 500 with a 17 forward equal weight S&P 500. We're also going to be taking a closer look at sentiment and what the data tells us this next week will look like. We've got a lot to talk about so let's roll the tape. Welcome everybody to the daily recap show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. My name is Chase. If you like this video please subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a like and a comment for the algorithm let's get into it now a very very green week across the board guys we're gonna have a very strong week particularly when you have nvidia green microsoft green google green meta green you know what's crazy about apple they were down four percent on thursday and they only finished pretty much flat for the week down 0.2 percent considering everything going on with apple right now so to see that figure just shows the resilience in this market but every sector did really really well there were just a couple of red spots in places like semiconductors here amd down five percent smci down nine uh, percent acn down 9.9 percent you can see like abbott laboratories nike lululemon so you know if you didn't make money this week you're definitely concentrated in the wrong stocks you probably have amd in your portfolio probably have stuff like Nike Lululemon in your portfolio but if you're holding an index the Q's the S&P 500 the Dow Jones I guarantee you've had a very good week this past week now here are the sectors so the best performing sectors is home builders here semiconductors and then communication services for the week followed by software and discretionary so like high risk high growth names these are all like growth assets now the worst performing sectors real estate GDX healthcare but Let's be real, you know, healthcare still putting up a positive week, just, you know, up 0.06. And we can see that if we look at the chart, the majority of the gains came here like late Wednesday. And then we actually followed through those gains into Thursday and then part a bit of the losses on Friday. But all in all, still a very positive week uh, for the markets. Very, very trepid leading into this FOMC. So the markets weren't really sure what power is going to say. But the second we get a, a dovish tilt, it's off to the races, especially with these high growth names. But let's actually hop on the charts. All right, so in today's chart analysis, we are actually going to look at the RSP, the S&P 500 equal weight, simply because the analysis for the equal weight and the S&P 400 mid cap, almost identical. Everything I tell you guys on this from a structural and fundamental standpoint will apply to um, the mid cap index as well. And we might also cover S&P 600 really, really quickly. Now, one thing to do note is that the equal weight is actually in the context of this massive, massive uptrend. This is the monthly chart right here. Something to note, on a monthly chart basis, we are currently at all time monthly closing highs. And we do have a bit of a wick here, but the monthly candle isn't closed. So looking at the weekly chart, very similar situation. We are at weekly closing highs. Again, we do have a bit of a wick and that actually is quite a long wick. So a lot of sellers did come in at the top on Friday to take the RSP down. That being said, still a green bodied candle and a new all time high close. We have to look at that as very, very bullish, especially from where we were middle of last year, looking at this low right Right here and we put in equal highs and we put in a higher low higher high higher low new all-time high we can't fault the fact that we are incredibly bullish we are in an uptrend here in the rsp in the equal way and you don't want to fight the trend so in this market you only want to buy dips now let's look at key levels where if we do pull back to those levels buyers and bulls will offer strong support this doesn't mean that we're going to sell to those levels. It doesn't mean I'm bearish. I'm simply outlining the levels where we could pull back to and still be in a technical uptrend. And I'm outlining levels that are good buying opportunities. Now on a weekly chart basis, guys, this is the line I want you guys to look at as absolutely critical that we need to hold on a weekly chart basis. And if we actually are to just measure from where we closed this week to where it is right now, it's about a 6% pullback to that line right there. 
Now it is an important level because you used it as resistance right here, resistance turned support, and it started this rally we've seen in 2024 to the upside. Now on a weekly chart basis, that's the absolute key line we have to hold. I do think that we could probably go as low as the week right here, but if we do go below, I think downside flows will probably take us to some key zones right here at 148, 140, and then maybe the 132 level. And we could really, you know, see these levels very, very quickly if we do get below the 155 area. So the 155 is an absolute key, key level to hold in the equal weight. Now we've just broken all time highs in the equal weight on a closing basis on the weekly chart. And that's very, very bullish. Now hopping on the daily chart, we get a more nuanced feel. And I think zooming in so we can see this 155 is sort of the weekly pullback zone that we can look to. But on a daily chart, this chart actually looks very, very constructive, super, super linear returns. And the second we got a dip, it was bought very, very quickly to the upside. Now we did get a pretty ugly candle here on Friday, you know, opened at the top, sold all the way down, closed at the lows and nearly, nearly closed this gap right here. So on this daily chart right here, the level that I want you guys to look at is this level right here. I think if we break the 163 level, I think we are going to see downside flows uh, in the RSP. However, if we do pull back and sort of just bounce here, that's constructive. And then we probably go ahead and continue the uptrend and break all time highs in the RSP. And another reason as to why this is an absolutely key level is because if we zoom out, it was actually the all time highs that we made here in 2021. We do know that resistance becomes support in the financial markets. And that's why if we do pull back that can and probably will offer a lot of support for the bulls. And if we do break below, it's why that support then could become resistance for the bears. Now that's not to say we don't just rally. We could 100% just rally from where we are right now on Monday. You know, the RSP trading at 17 times earnings, fairly cheap. It's actually, you know, historically what it normally trades at. The main pullback level you want to look at is 163 for this week right here. This is where you want to find support. If we do get below it, I'll update you on the week on what levels we can look to. But I really don't think we're going to break that level this week. I think we're going to find very, very strong support right here, especially with everything we do know that's happening, you know, um, with monetary policy, the fundamentals, earnings, the technical setup. So I do think 163 is the level that if we do pull back to, you can look to buy it. We'll update you if things get worse, but I don't think that's going to happen. I do think we sort of just bounce, find support at this 163 level and then go to new all time highs right here in the equal weight. So I got some very interesting stats here for you guys. S&P 500 performance in the last week of March. So the week we're currently entering based on three different groupings of trailing performance from March 14th to 24th. So we're going to call this period right here the 10 days. So essentially when the 10 days is negative greater than 0.5%, this is the returns we can expect when we're in between 0.5 to 1.2% gain. And then if it's greater than 1.2%, now in these 10 days for 2024, the S&P 500 is up 1.67%. So this is the barometer we want to look at. And on average, it's looking very, very negative. You can see that in this time periods right here, when we've had a positive period leading up to the last week of March, the average week this week has returned negative 0.74% three up years, 10 down years. And so we could actually have a down week in the next week based on history. And you could see that when leading up into this week, if we are negative, we actually normally have a much more positive scenario. 11 up years, two down years, 1.37% average return. So actually based on history, if we do get a negative week this week, we shouldn't be surprised. Generally speaking, History tells us this is what we can actually expect. Now, let's actually talk about sentiment. This is the BOFA bull bear indicator. And this indicator continues to tick down for some reason. I have no idea why, but it actually fell to 6.1 from 6.5. And we were actually at 7.1 about three to four weeks ago as the S&P 500 has continued to rally. That being said, the data is here and we are slowly ticking towards the buy zone. But based on where we are right now, 6.1, the sentiment is still hold equities you have for the moment. Now, now let's actually talk about earnings. So S&P 500 earnings is officially done. All 500 companies have reported. We are officially at 10.1% earnings growth for the fourth quarter 2023, 3.7% revenue growth. Now we still have quite a number of Russell companies. And I do believe over the next two weeks, we should have all of the earnings done for the Russell. And the Russell is not looking good with earnings. Negative 1.4% revenue growth, negative 19.2% earnings growth. Now let's dive deeper into S&P 500 earnings. So 
you can see uh, S&P 500 financial year two EPS revision sentiment has recently turned positive. So this is for uh, 2025. And you can see that the sentiment is moving to the upside. And I've seen some crazy, crazy revisions for earnings here in the S&P 500. I've seen stats for the second quarter 2025, third quarter 2025 of something like 18% and like 14%. Although these figures are a long way out and they probably will be revised downwards. We are starting to see a huge uptick in revision breadth for next year's earnings in 2025. And let's just say if these earnings are to materialize, it's going to be a very good year for stocks in 2025 and probably 2026 as well. But let's actually look at the year and now look at quarter one earnings, the upcoming earnings. And I do believe in about five to 10 trading days, Q1 earnings season starts. So kind of crazy where we are. Time is flying. This year is flying by super, super quickly. But we are expected to see earnings growth in the S&P 500 for Q1 of 5%, excluding energy, we're looking at 8.1%. And we're looking at $22 billion worth of earnings here for the S&P 500 in total, with the best sectors coming out of com services, utilities, information technology, and consumer discretionary. The worst performing sectors being materials and energy. So miners as a whole are performing the worst. And then everything else kind of looks sort of average. But these are the earnings we can expect. And yeah, you know, if you're in com services, if you're in technology, that's probably the place to be. Now, let's actually have a look at valuation with regards to these earnings. So the S&P 500 right now trades at 21.2 times earnings. Guys, we're getting very, very pricey. It was just in December, we were looking at this trading at 18 times because we look at this valuation graph every single week on our weekend video. And if you want to see it every week, go ahead, subscribe to me below, guys. I appreciate every single subscription and it really helps me out with the algorithm. But right now, the S&P 500 looking very, very pricey, even on a price to earnings growth basis and a PE basis, only producing a free cash flow yield right now of 3.4%. That is very, very low considering the fact that we can get a treasury bond paying 4.2%. However, the treasury bond doesn't grow its earnings. But if we actually have a look at the sectors individually, we can see energy still the cheapest, utilities here as well at 15.7, then financials very close to a 16 times PE. The most expensive sector, information technology and consumer discretionary. And I still think, and I've been saying this for ages, the best value for money that you can get right now is com services trade at a one PEG, 18.9 times PE ratio, which is lower than the market multiple, by the way, and you get a 5% free cash flow yield. That screams huge buy opportunity here in com services and the growth prospects in some of these companies is more than some of like tech companies and discretionary companies. So to be trading on these valuation metrics, very, very attractive. That being said, I think the S&P 500 is now getting a little bit pricey, but as we start pricing in the next quarter's earnings, we should see this multiple decrease ever so slightly, but I wouldn't hold my breath since the S&P 500 is actually getting a bit expensive. I think anything over like 21, 20.5 20 is pr pretty pricey. It's getting very pricey. Now we can actually find value in stuff like the equal weight. The equal weight actually trades at a 25% discount to the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 trades at 21 times. Equal weight right now trades at a 17 times PE. So if you are looking for value, you can actually go buy the equal weight. And at a 17 multiple, you'd be getting the equal weight at about the 20 year average multiple. Not bad at all. Now we got this data right here and it's essentially Goldman Sachs data on pretty much where they see S&P 500 valuation, a few different scenarios. So we can look at what the market cap index will be and then what the equal weight will be in that scenario. So they have here mega cap exceptionalism. If this trade continues, so the mega caps continue to roar ahead, they can see the S&P 500 trading at a 23 times multiple. That'll lead the S&P 500 to be at a six thousand price target and that'll mean the broader market would actually trade lower at a 16 times because a lot of the earnings will be concentrated here in the bigger names their baseline however is a 5200 and a 20 times s p 500 and a 15 times equal weight if they want to price in recession risk the s p 500 will trade at a 17 times pe the equal weight at 14 times that'll take us to a 4500 s p 500 on a catch down scenario we trade at a 4500 s p 500 where we actually move up in price to earnings for the equal weight, but down in the market cap weighted. That means some of the mega caps get hit the hardest. This is where we currently are, 5234, 21 times 17 PE. And then on a catch up scenario, so essentially the broader market catch ups to the mega caps. If that is to happen, we trade at 22 times PE, 18 times equal weight. That puts the S&P 500 at 5,800. And that is absolutely crazy. And all of this is actually based on earnings estimates of 256. And it's it's pretty much between their earnings and consensus earnings. And if we actually go ahead and hit consensus earnings, you get actually increase all of these numbers by about 
maybe five to eight percent that being said this is a number of scenarios here that goldman believe could happen and you know at best case the s p 500 trading six thousand at year end that would be absolutely crazy but i've seen crazier things in the market now let's actually look at something more realistic long-term growth expectations for the s p 500 now right now we're sitting at about 11 percent. so long-term growth expectations it's about 10 years and if you put your money into the s p 500 right now you're looking at about 11 percent growth the long-term average is nine percent now this can change we were expecting 13 percent post COVID. did we get that not quite and you can see in the tech bubble we were looking at 16 percent at these highs so the s p 500 continues to be a great investment and according to this data should continue to be a great investment looking at the longer term now let's talk earnings so there's no big names reporting earnings this week most all s p 500 companies have reported it's mostly just small and mid caps reporting there are a couple of key names gamestop carnival cruises rumble right here paychex is reporting i didn't even know playboy had a publicly traded company that's news to my ears but yeah nothing notable that's going to happen in the week and i don't think we're going to cover earnings i think we're just going to take a break from this earnings season and wait for q1 earnings to kick off with the financial names in the first or second week of april so data next week everything's going to be focused on right here pce the fed's preferred gauge of inflation so just diving into the specifics for pce headline month over month the consensus is 0.4 percent and then year over year is 2.5 percent and then core pce x food and energy we're looking at 0.3 percent and then 2.8 percent year over year month over month we also get our fourth quarter gdp as well as housing data so we got home sales we also got like durable goods orders initial jobless claims as usual personal consumption gdp quarter over quarter so a very very big week of data but a very light week of earnings so it sort of balances each other out but let's be real almost every single week is a big week of data because every single print is the most important print until the next one gamma something i didn't cover in yesterday's video guys not much has changed spot price is slowly approaching this core resistance and assume that if we do get above it the 50 50 to 50 will offer very strong resistance but if we do get above it do expect core gamma to be rolled up the tape very very quickly to the 5300 and then 5350 strike crazy when you think about it not much negative gamma in the tape the gamma flip is at 5130 and i gave you my targets for the s p 500 in yesterday's video go and check it out if you haven't watched it and i said we can look to stuff like 5250 5300 in the next week because momentum is on the side of the bulls and we're very close to leaving the window of weakness in the week ahead and moving into april but if we do get a bit of a pullback based on some of the the data points we have if we do get a bit of a pullback this week go ahead and actually buy that dip the reason you want to buy that dip is because i truly believe that in the next one to two weeks this actually might be one of the lows for the year and you want to look for buyable dip opportunities because I think the rest of 2024 is going to be very, very bullish. I think we're going to go a lot higher than where we are right now. And because we are in a momentum based market, I know it sounds crazy, but it is what it is. And this is all based on earnings expectations, what Jerome Powell said, the macro environment and the fundamental environment. And I broke it down in this post right here on my Twitter. In the next one to two weeks, we're looking for a viable dip to add exposure to our current long trades. Hopefully we get that dip this week. We may get another viable dip in April. Do you take that with consideration? Because history shows that the momentum factor is seasonally negative negative in April if Q1 is greater than 7%. But given the current macro fundamental and seasonals, you want to take the first opportunity you get to add exposure and sit through the volatility. It's going to be a bullish year. So guys, I think we're going higher. I've outlined it very clearly for you guys right here. If we do get a dip this week, you want to buy it. We may get another dip in April, but given the current environment, I do think that you want to buy this dip and I do think we're going to go a lot higher. My current price target for the S&P 500 end of year is 53.82. But if we go ahead and hit that, it's going to be revised up. And I do think we're going to go a lot higher. I think it's going to be a blockbuster year, especially with the macro fundamentals uh, and technicals aligning right now with where everything is. I think we're going a lot higher, guys. So that is my take on the current environment. Now, looking at a couple of charts and trade ideas for the week ahead, this is the bull market behavior composite and you can see the market is exhibiting bull market behavior normally when we get above the six level right here once we enter it as you can see we normally go on very extended rallies that normally last a good couple of years so we could be in the very very early innings of this bull market and don't get me wrong there's definitely volatility along the way but all in all this is a very bullish sign it's a positive sign and it's not something you want to short as long as we're above this four handle right here you want to look at all pullbacks as dip buying opportunities and maybe if we get below the four that's when you could start to 
take some risk off the table and just wait out the volatility. Keeping up with the theme of today's video, the equal weight, this is the equal weight Magnificent 7, still at all time highs, despite the volatility we've seen lately in Apple. Not so much Google anymore, it's up about 11% from its lows. So it is exhibiting quite a lot of strength, not so much Apple and not yet Tesla, but all of the others, I mean, apart from Google, it's about 4% from all time highs. Pretty much every other stock here is exhibiting a lot of strength, particularly Nvidia, Microsoft, as well as Meta. But all in all, we still look at the Magnificent 7 and sure, Tesla's not quite there, Apple's not quite there. They're still great stocks, great businesses. They're making all time highs and that means you wanna be long this market. Now looking at some trade ideas for the week ahead, uh, one of this here, Flutter Entertainment. We can see a massive uptick in volume. We've crossed above all time highs and we're sort of balancing above this 210 region. If we get pullbacks into like 213, 212, 210, look for buying opportunities. And then if we go ahead and like break these highs, I think we're just gonna continue rallying here in Flutter Entertainment. Another great opportunity is CyberArk Software. You can see that we've tested this downtrend line a number of times. We broke it once, but it was parred very, very quickly. We held the support and we're now testing the upper end. If we break users resistance, we can then look for higher price action and we can target figures like 275, 280 and on the upper end, 300. This chart looks very, very bullish. And then Newtonix, it looks like it wants to break out. That's a very bullish candle right there. And if we do break above the 6387 level, we can look to as high as $70. We're out of this bull flag that's occurring right here. You can see we tested it multiple times. Buyers came in and held and now it's, now it's break above user support and then off to the races. But if you've made it up until here, thank you so much for watching guys. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a like on this video and leave a comment too. Cheers.